Welcome, and thank you for joining us today for Travel Talks. I'm Diane Cook, the owner and principal travel designer for Seven Seas to Sea Travel. I specialize in not-so-routine travel and bucket list adventures. Today, my very special guest is a, a colleague I've known for many years, um, Kara, and she is from Cork Expeditions. And as a polar specialist, I, I just love to share these parts of the world with my clients. And today we're going to talk about the Canadian high Arctic. So Kara, thank you for joining us and, and just take it away. Oh, thank you so much, Diane, for having me. I love talking about travel and our beautiful planet, but I also love talking about most of uh, the polar regions. So I'm thrilled to share with everyone uh, some information about the Canadian Arctic and also mention Diane's going to be traveling with us next year on one of our Arctic Express trips. So I'll mention uh, that itinerary as well. So my name is Kara Matthew. I've been with Cork Expeditions for almost 13 years now. I do have the polar bug. I have polar fever. I explored the first time in 2010 in the, in the Arctic. In, uh, it was my first trip. And uh, I just I got very inspired and uh, with the polar region. So uh, people den tend to go back, especially to the Arctic, more than once because there's so much to see and do. So a little bit about Cork Expeditions is we equal polar. We only do polar travel exclusively. So we're not a company that dabbles a little bit in the Arctic and Antarctica. Uh, we have 30 years of polar experience and we've taken more people to the polar regions than any other operator. So you do know that you're in good hands when you're traveling with Cork Expeditions. And so why would you choose Cork Expeditions with with seven C's to see as well. It's because we have been in business for three decades, like I mentioned, and we were the first company to take passengers to the North Pole, 90 degrees north, back in 1991, which is still a trip to we do today. We were also the first company to fully circumnavigate Antarctica with passengers as well. So please definitely look into Cork Expeditions for your polar adventure. We have a small ship of expedition ships. We have a small fleet of expedition ships all under 200 passengers. And this is another reason to go with Cork Expeditions in these regions, because all of our ships are small or 199, 132 passengers. So we can get everyone off the ship at the same time. The whole purpose to get beyond the ship and maneuvering in these regions is to get off the ship. But of course, the trips can be as leisure and as active as you'd like. Our onboard experience is wonderful, but we're really focused on the off ship too and getting you into the heart of these destinations. I did want to mention who is a polar traveler and who comes with Cork Expeditions, because you might be thinking, Expedition, is this for me? Or is this too out of the box? I'm a little scared, which understandable. When sometimes I hear Expedition, I'm thinking that too. But who travels with Cork Expeditions? And from our research, we've determined that there's typically four types of travelers. And you might find yourself in one of these types of travelers, or maybe all four. Uh, we have the checklisters. So maybe you're that type of traveler that wants to checklist seeing a polar bear off your bucket list and want to come to the Arctic with us. Or maybe you want to go into the heart of the Arctic Circle, north of 66 degrees south. Um, so those are definitely the types of travelers that come with us. We also have a fantastic educational program on board. We have glaciologists, geologists, biologists, and we have polar bear specialists. So those are the types of learners that come with us. So if you are a learner and driven by quality experience with experts and like-minded individuals, uh, you would definitely want to come with Cork Expeditions. Uh, if you're someone who really appreciates not only a luxurious accommodations, but also the intimate environment of a small little expedition vessel, those are the types of travelers that come with us. We also have those escapists that want to disconnect and get away from it all and be in the heart of nature. Those types of travelers come with Cork Expeditions, as well as the adventurer. Uh, not last but not least, uh, if you want a great vacation experience and come home with stories to tell of an adventure, uh, those types of travelers come with Cork Expeditions to tell all of your friends about your adventures. But it, we also offer things like kayaking and paddling excursions. So if you do want an active trip, that is something that Cork Expeditions offers. So it can be as active or as leisure as you'd like your trip to be. I do find that being in these really remote locations is an adventurous spirit enough being on these little expedition vessels, but we certainly have a lot of activities for you if you'd like. 
we our average age is 50 years old our minimum age is eight but i was on board with a 99 year old who i did some contemplative walks with and some longer hikes i was also on board with an 86 year old on an arctic trip and that 86 year old she didn't get off the ship once she loved cruising around the fjords and talking with the ship captain and having her happy hour on board i love chatting with her at dinners and lunches and hearing about all of her stories so it literally is there's a little something for everyone on our, our trips so today let's talk about the arctic let's go to the top of the world our Arctic season starts at the beginning of May and goes all the way through to October. Because we only do polar and we're uncompromisingly polar, we're in these regions for a lot longer than a lot of other operators. And so today, though, we will focus on the Canadian Arctic. And so with the Canadian Arctic, there's so many beautiful things to see. And it truly is like another planet. Uh, the Canadian Arctic is so remote. Uh, it's a gorgeous place to explore. So there's gorgeous glacier topped mountains and jagged coastlines and great for cruising, but also great for wildlife. So if you're really into wildlife, uh, this includes many islands. So including uh, Baffin Island too, and uh, as well as Devon Island, which I'll talk about. So if you want to explore the Northwest Passage, what's really great over the past 30 years of cork expeditions exploring the polar regions, from a lot of comment cards, people have wanted to explore the Northwest Passage with us, which they've had, but they're typically 30 day trips, really long trips. But with our new ship, the Ultramarine, which Diane actually has as our backdrop, this great new vessel, this purpose built vessel, we can leave in the Canadian Arctic because she has such a large range. We don't need to keep repositioning her with fuel and things like that, that she can stay in the Arctic. And what's lovely about this is we've created new itineraries that are shorter. So we have 12 day Northwest Passage trips, as well as nine days. So it's really a glimpse in the heart of the Northwest Passage and some highlights. So you don't have a lot of sea days on these trips anymore with Cork Expeditions. It's great to dabble in the Arctic for a particular trip and see some wonderful highlights and come home or, or see another area um, of Canada before or after your trip. So this great nine day program is a brand new itinerary because of our new expedition ship, the Ultramarine. And this is the trip in 2022. So August 15th to August 20, 23rd, that Diane Cook will be hosting. She'll be hosting a group on this departure. So these are the areas that we are focusing on on today. So why travel to the Canadian Arctic? So if you're wanting to seek new experiences, and the vastness of these areas, this is definitely a trip for you. Uh, if you've cruised all the rivers and you're thinking, now what? Or maybe you've cruised Alaska and you've loved the beauty of seeing those glaciers. Why not see the Canadian Arctic? The Northwest Passage offers plenty of opportunities to not only glimpse wildlife, but also to follow in the footsteps of legendary explorers. I was never into polar history before I started traveling with Cork Expeditions, but our historians on board bring it to life. And I find it so fascinating. And CBC Radio did a great job of covering um, Franklin's shipwreck when it was found a few years back. And I think that really put uh, Beachy Island on the map and made it a bit more popular. So, um, when we asked most guests of their opinion of the most important exploration of the Arctic, a lot of people do say it's more often than not Franklin's Erebus and Terror in 1848. So this history comes alive when we're in the Canadian Arctic. Beachy Island is an island located on Devon Island. And it's one of the possible landing sites most likely will go there on this itinerary. So it's best known for containing three graves of Franklin's expedition members, which were first discovered in 1850 by searchers for the lost Franklin expedition. So the searchers found a large stone carn uh, along with graves of the three of three of Franklin's crewmen. So uh, Petty Officer John Torrington and a Royal Marine private William Brain, and Amble Seaman John Hartnell. And there's no written record or indication of where Franklin planned to sail the next season. Uh, so this was the last landing 
for these uh, the ships before they disappeared. And most often than not, it can be foggy in this area. Uh, and then sometimes the fog does lift. Sometimes it can be very windy and cold in this area. So we are traveling there in August. Uh, so it just depends. The weather can range from about plus uh, seven degrees to about minus two degrees Celsius. So just depending on the wind and the sunshine. There are times where people are joyous coming and out of the zodiacs onto this beachy island um, and once they're at the graves and they hear the stories uh, from our historians that are passionate about this area uh, people are weeping uh, after after the stories that are told at these grave sites so just a, a remarkable aspect of this arctic express itinerary but also port leopold an abandoned outpost for the hudson's bay company in 1920 uh, can be seen in this area on this trip. It's an important site in the fur trade history. The northeast tip of Somerset Island, this is a great historical site. So it's incredible to see artifacts from the past, like these whale bones too. Uh, so it's kind of neat seeing uh, a historical building when you're in the middle of nowhere on these trips. Another air island, uh, so Devon Island, another area of Devon Island that we explore is Radstock Bay. Uh, so this is the largest uninhabited island in the world. Something to talk about at dinner tonight or tomorrow night with some of your friends virtually or at the dinner table with your family. So this is a great uh, possible landing site. So blue whale bones are seen here on the top right. So possibilities of landing in Devon Island and Radstock Bay. Again, the largest uninhabited island in the world is Devon Island. Great fun fact. I, when I discovered that, I didn't even know that until about six months ago and I've been working here for 13 years. So fun fact. So Devon Island, Radstock Bay is an incredible area. But we also are gonna be seeing wildlife in the Canadian Arctic. And so I'll walk you through a few species that we might see. But what's really exciting about a cork expeditions trip, and I really believe no other operator is doing this, our fantastic expedition team are always on the lookout 24 seven on our trips. So they're all out with binoculars. We have even the middle of the night, we may wake you up gently. You can sleep in if you want. But one example was we saw a mother bear, a polar bear and her two cubs out on the sea ice. So about three or four in the morning, we got a gentle wake up call. Some people did sleep in, some people came out with their pajama bottoms on and their parkas and some boots uh, to go in and be and witness these creatures. So our expedition team take approximately 30 minute, one hour intervals of always being on the lookout for wildlife. Uh, so we are always on the lookout. And the little expedition vessel, the ultramarine, is one of the best viewing platforms for seeing wildlife as well. So we always encourage people to get out on deck as much as possible. So uh, Diane and I, before we got on uh, this event, this gathering with all of you, is we were talking about beluga whales in the Arctic. Uh, there's a great place, Cunningham Inlet, where uh, beluga whales gather. Uh, so it's a very common for beluga whales to be seen uh, in this area of the Northwest Passage. So into places like Cunningham Inlet, where it is the largest nursery and gathering place in the Arctic. But also bowheaded whales are located in areas off the coast of Baffin Island, which will, will go to the Northern portion of Baffin Island on this itinerary. So we've it's an area where almost 10,000 bowheaded whales are. Um, and also areas of this region to uh, fin whales can potentially be seen, uh, but also polar Polar bears. We're always on the lookout of polar bears. This, there's 24,000 polar bears approximately in the Arctic, and a lot of them are in uh, the Canadian high Arctic. Uh, polar bears do not have passports, though. They can travel from Russia over to Canada, over to Norway. So the polar bears uh, might not always live in Canada all year round, but we are always on the lookout for polar bears. We are in polar bear country. Other fun wildlife that we can see are the Arctic hares on landings. We get very quiet. Our expedition team member, even especially if you're in a small group of 10 or 12 people, we have small groups. And uh, I loved getting sitting in silence and just reflecting on the areas in which we're in. And all of a sudden, an Arctic hare 
darted across all of us. So moments like that, or even Arctic foxes, that happens with Arctic fox. The Arctic is different than the Antarctic for the wildlife. In Antarctica, the wildlife is everywhere. There's wildlife at every turn. But what makes the expedition even more exciting in the Arctic is finding these uh, specific animals and uh, being on the lookout for the, the wildlife. We'll also see walrus, most likely. You can smell the walrus before you can see them. That is definitely for certain. And so they are smelly and very noisy. But we also can see muskox in uh, the Canadian Arctic. They're related to the sheep family and they're also seen in Greenland. So uh, we'll teach you how to spot them. And of course, in numerous species of seals as well. So lots to see and do in the Arctic. But the polar bears are, are the stars of the show. Uh, this is a very popular um, reason why a lot of people go to the Canadian Arctic as well. So this is a great, a great shot with someone who is a photographer. We have photography programs on all of our trips. So if you're not only a wildlife enthusiast or a historian buff, uh, we have photography programs on all of our trips. So if you're a photographer, uh, a birder, uh, definitely think about coming to the Canadian Arctic. But we can see wonderful polar bears from the ship. So this often happens more than not. Uh, we sometimes get into the zodiacs too to safely approach an, uh, the polar bear without disturbing them. But get out the binoculars. I loved seeing polar bears from a distance in areas like Norway and the Canadian Arctic. And so getting out the binoculars, highly recommend if you don't have binoculars, we have them in our gift shop and we also have them on the bridge. I ended up buying on my third trip, finally, my own pair of binoculars. I bought them in our in our polar bear boutique on, on board, the polar boutique on our ship, uh, because I just decided I needed, instead of grabbing and borrowing others uh, in the bridge, I thought I just needed my own pair. Uh, so I loved even witnessing polar bears uh, with binoculars. It's fantastic. So be on the lookout. And sometimes too, we think they're rocks because the polar bears have a little bit of a gray tinge and they're a little bit dirty. And then nope, there, it's not a rock, it's a moving rock, which ends up being a polar bear. So really exciting uh, being on the lookout for polar bears, uh, not only with the ship, but in the comfort and safety of the Zodiacs. If there is a polar bear sighted on a particular landing, we will not land. There are times too where the, the fog, the F word we call it in the Arctic, the fog might roll in. And so there are times where we've been on a landing for 15, 20 minutes, and we do have to come back on board because the fog can uh, pose a, a bit of a danger of the, of the polar bears. We might not be able to see them. So that is a, a be always on the lookout for the polar bears. Um, one of our expedition team members, uh, who Naomi Box, who is a part of our guest experience management team, she manages our guest experience on board. And she had a personal Norwal experience on a similar itinerary in the Canadian Arctic in the areas in which we'll visit. And it doesn't happen all the time, but it can be seen. Uh, these are the mystical unicorns of the sea. And they are very skittish, very scared of, of people. They know that they've been hunted. Whales are very, very smart. So more often than not, they can hear the zodiacs in the distance. So there have been times where we've turned off the zodiacs for a while, for about 20 or 30 minutes. And this has happened where the experience of the narwhal, the mystical creature of the sea, has graced us with its presence from a distance. So it doesn't happen all the time. It is not guaranteed. No wildlife is. Uh, we, and that is truly part of the expedition. Uh, but it has been known to be seen. They have been come up in areas like uh, Beachy Island. So in, in the shallower areas like the beluga whales. Another area is Samford Fjord. Gorgeous fjords. If you like cruising, cruising through the uh, fjords is beautiful in the Canadian Arctic and there are no again there are no full sea days on these trips the 12 or the 9 day Arctic trips uh, the Canadian Arctic trips that begin and end in Toronto uh, so we'll fly everyone up to Resolute where we get on board the ship and cruising the fjords are beautiful so and a day we'll never forget is sometimes cruising through Ice Fjord uh, and on the right is Sam Ford Fjord on the left, so, so uh, the ice, ice fjord uh, and uh, Samford fjord is on the left and uh, the ice fjord is on uh, the right. So that's just a couple of places that we'll cruise in. And this just gives you an example. This is one of our expedition uh, little vessels that we had up here. And that just gives you perspective of the height of these fjords in the Canadian Arctic. So just great, great cruising. 
Also, com uh, community visits are a huge highlight. So some community visits are Arctic Bay uh, on Baffin Island, so Greece Fjord and Arctic Bay are areas that we can have wonderful cultural exchanges. We ask that our guests, so you conduct yourselves with a curiosity and a willingness to learn about uh, the, the subsistence based communities. And it's more about just the food and culture and practices. It's a great community engagement and an exchange that happens. Uh, so there had been uh, throat singing opportunities, uh, like these amazing uh, guests. Uh, and this is off ship, but more often than not too, we have uh, community visitors on board and engage with, engage with us on board too for great programs on board. Uh, we love bar talks at night. So after a full day of exploring off the ship, We'll come back on board, have a wonderful dinner, and then gather in the lounges and bars for a great bar talk. And sometimes the communities that we visit, uh, someone, a community member will come on board and give a great little bar talk um, before going back. So these are just some highlights. And, and if you're someone who's really interested in cultural aspects of your trips, highly recommend visiting the Canadian Arctic. It's a wonderful place to explore. I loved, you know, when I went to um, Kenya, I, I really went for the wildlife and, uh, and the scenery, but the people, I came back remembering the people. And this is like the Canadian Arctic, it's unforgettable. So we're trying to get off the ship as much as possible. We try and do at least uh, two excursions a day. We do hiking uh, and Zodiac cruising and, and great walks. Everyone breaks up into walks. So if you're in the mood for a little contemplative walk, great. If you're also in the mood for just staying around the beach, we'll have generally an ornithologist, a, a birder or historian that gathers everyone along the beach. So you don't actually even have to go for a walk or, or a longer hike. This trip is really um, tailor-made to what you want to get out out of your experience. So we go to the Canadian Arctic in August and September. When the ice is broken up fully in the, in the North American uh, summer, uh, we do have these are ice-built, purpose-built ships uh, with ice strength and hulls maneuvering specifically built for the polar regions. So we do visit these areas in August and September. So when the ice makes it easier to access these areas, uh, so earlier in the season, heavy ice doesn't allow for a lot of travel in these areas because ice does move, it shifts with currents. Uh, so this is a great opportunity to go into the Canadian Arctic. And I love nine day trips too, and 12 day trips in these areas because you can still come back and you'll have a little bit of a chilly summer, but you can come back to our beautiful um, areas of the Canadian um, uh, areas of different provinces that have warmer temperatures. So I, I do love escaping. I, I live in Toronto. We are a US based company in Seattle and some of our summers can get quite warm. So I loved escaping sometimes to either Norway or areas of the Canadian Arctic um, or Iceland to, to have a little bit of cooler weather for a bit of my summer break. Off ship experiences are what cork expeditions are really known for. We offer the largest portfolio of off ship adventure options. So we get you closer into nature with our expert guides and innovative itineraries, but also our quick deploying zodiacs. So the zodiacs get deployed even faster for spontaneous up close wildlife encounters that you never before imagined. So we offer more than adventure options than anyone else. And what's included. Our hiking opportunity is Zodiac cruising, like I mentioned, that infamous polar plunge. So pack your bathing suit just in case, not only for the spa on board, but at the last minute, the Canadian Arctic might inspire you to do the polar plunge. I had a little shot of vodka on one of my experiences after I got out to warm me out. And there were times where I didn't participate in the polar plunge. And I just had the experience of watching everyone, which was just as fun. And in the Canadian Arctic, we do have heli flight sightseeing included. So even if you don't want to go on a long hike, if you wish, a one 15 to 20 minute heli flight sightseeing excursion is included. So great for all different activity levels as well. But if you do want a little added extra layer for adventure, we do have paddling excursions that you can join a, a paddling program with an inflatable kayak that gets you out for an hour and a half to two hours once on this trip. But then we also have a full sea kayaking program. So definitely ask Diane if you are interested in kayaking because we have, do have a sea kayaking program and then a great um, one time paddling excursion as well. 
I'm not an avid kayaker, but I love doing the paddling excursion and the inflatable kayak. And we have guides that come out with everyone. We hire specific expedition guides just for adventure programs as well. We have the most experienced expedition team in the polar industry. At 30 years now of polar adventure, our seasoned guides, expedition team, and polar specialists have endless passion and unparalleled knowledge to share with all of you on these trips. I really do love the fact that our expedition team are with you during dinners and lunches. So they're not just accessible uh, through the zodiacs or on the landings or during the actual presentations they give. And this is a huge highlight. Our trips aren't like the larger ships of 250, 300, 500 passengers, where you might actually have a uh, crew member taxiing your zodiacs, your landing or zodiac cruise. It is our actual expedition team. So I love that maybe going on a landing site, a seal might pop its head. And the expedition team member can say what type of maybe seal it is or what kind of ice flow is the ice is it an iceberg from a glacier or is it sea ice and we have the highest ratio of expedition team members to guess which really means a more personal experience for you it's one expedition team member to seven passengers on board and i'll mention now our ultramarine this game-changing ship this is not a rendering anymore we have new uh images and video footage because she just was built in Croatia some good news during this time and so we have now new pictures so this really does bring tears to my eyes the ultramarine after being with the company for so long and seeing all the blueprints for the ship she is now a something tangible she's physical um, and now in Latin uh, ultramarine means beyond the sea so this is our brand new purpose-built polar vessel and so with this wonderful ship, she's designed specifically for the polar regions and features these two helicopter pads. So we will have helicopter pilots on board and helicopter directors. So we'll able to have that aerial view. It'll be so neat to see glaciers from sea level, but then see mountain ranges from the, from the aerial views as well. We'll have four quick launching Zodiac embarkation points as well. And we have 20 Zodiacs on, on board. So we're able to get everyone off the ship at the same time. This is truly a, a game changer in polar travel. Something I'm very, very proud of, uh, uh, an expedition ship that's truly game changing. There's all outside cabins on board. So we have everything from uh, Explorer Suites with no balconies to um, spacious suites with balconies and even own all the way up to owner suites. We do have triple cabins too and shared programs. So if you say, hey, Diane, I want to go on this trip, but I can't find anyone to go with me. We'll team you up with a like-minded individual. So if you're a female traveler, um, we'll team you up with another female traveler. If we don't find anyone to fill the cabin, you get the cabin at the same uh, shared rate as well. So it's great about our shared program. We also have triple, triple cabins for great prices. And if you also are traveling with two other friends or maybe two other family members, the triple cabins are great for that as well. We have a great bistro on board, fitness center. We have a spa. This is known as a wellness ship too. So we have things like um, yoga on board as well and a juice bar. So this is great uh, uh, for spas and, and wellness. So we have great lounges and bars. I love connecting with like-minded individuals, sharing stories with people about what I had seen on that landing and what they had seen on that excursion. So we have a great uh, lounge and bar as well and a wonderful exercise and, and wellness center. So just picture yourself being on a chilly landing and coming back to the sauna or the steam room uh, or getting a nice massage and booking with Diane, there is a 250 US per person onboard credit that you can use, uh, which is great because Diane is one of our preferred partners and I work so closely with her. So when you book with Diane and you book a Cork Expeditions trip, uh, you do get a $250 per person amenity. So you can use it in the gift shop, in the bar or in the spa. So a lot of what we talked about today can be seen on Diane's uh, hosted trip, uh, the Canadian Arctic group departure with seven seas to sea. So again, it's nine days, begins in Toronto. There's a hotel in Toronto, everyone gets together. Even if you're living in Toronto or Mississauga or Guelph or Ottawa, 
highly recommend staying that night, that first night, because we fly everyone up to Resolute and then we could leave really early in the morning for the charter flight. And so we're essentially building our own little bubble with all the passengers in the hotel and on the ship, on the um, flight and on the ship. Uh, and our guests, our crew and our expedition team will be on the ship waiting for you on day two. So you'll embark in the afternoon. We'll explore a little bit of Resolute. Uh, if you haven't explored Resolute before, this is a great opportunity to see Resolute. And then we get on the ship in the afternoon and we reposition the ship generally in the evenings, uh, in the middle of the night. So once again, there are no full sea days. So if you're worried about seasickness, which is a common question that I always get asked, uh, these areas between these islands are quite sheltered in these islands. So great for, for cruising and pleasant cruising experiences. Uh, and then day eight, uh, we'll fly back to Toronto, uh, have a night in Toronto. If you do want to go home that night, that's absolutely fine if you are close. But maybe you have a flight uh, to Vancouver or maybe you're going from Chicago or New York. Uh, so it's great to have that extra night in Toronto. Um, and then you can depart uh, at any time on day nine. So this is all on the luxurious ultramarine. All, um, this is a wonderful new game-changing little expedition vessel that we have. The onboard experience is incredible. We have so much to see and do uh, from the Polar Library on board to the exercise room. We also have great themed events. I was in bed some nights at about 9.30. I crawled into bed to journal because I just thought there was so much to see and do. I was up sometimes at six with the morning um, Zodiac cruise sometimes that we have. Or if you are a morning raiser, uh, get out on deck and, and see that morning light. There are generally 24 hours of, of daylight in these regions, but sometimes in August, um, there will be that, that light with the sun hovering. Uh, so gorgeous areas uh, to discover. And so we'll have some chefs doing some pastries, early morning risers. So we do have great themed events even at night, though, if you do or want to stay up and, and have that adventure. Uh, but our food is wonderful on board. We have breakfast, lunches and dinners. Uh, we have snacks throughout the departure, so you will not go hungry. I don't talk about the food and cuisine enough, but it's delightful, delightful food. Sustainability has always been a part of our DNA here at Cork Expeditions too, and I just wanted to mention this with all of you. Um, we did create also a Polar Ambassador Program. So not only did we create um, our Polar Promise that we launched in 2019, so our sustainability strategy under the banner of the Polar Promise, but I do believe that when you'll come back traveling with Cork Expeditions, after you've looked at the Arctic or Antarctica, you'll come back as a polar ambassador and take home the sustainability lessons that you'll learn in the Arctic and apply them in your everyday lives in your own communities at home. Uh, ultimately, it's about preserving the polar regions for our next generation of polar travelers. And that is indeed our polar promise. We are an industry leader in health and safety. Cork Expeditions is the only currently polar specialist with an externally accredited safety program. So po passenger health and safety has been a great number one priority of Cork Expeditions uh, the past three decades. And of course, the challenges that are prompted by this era that we're living in, this COVID-19, have reinforced our commitments to guest safety. So consequently, we have assembled a task of a multifunctional task at that of physicians uh, and polar experts and industry leaders to develop the most comprehensive health and safety plan in the expedition industry to provide with you a peace of mind when you are booking with Diane, whether it's the Arctic or Antarctica. While we're exploring the polar regions, we want you to have a peace of mind when you're not only booking your trip, but also uh, when you're on board. So we have the new four pillars of health and safety that do form our core approach. Um, so that's the clean expedition ships, healthy passengers, healthy expedition team, and the healthy expedition environment. So please ask Diane about our safe COVID policy. We have a great PDF and a little video that Diane can absolutely share with you with more details. But what's great, and I want to highlight the most, is that we're free from crowds in these areas. Picture being in a small little zodiac maneuvering around the polar regions with the polar air going through your hair. Um, it's very, na by nature, the polar regions are free from crowds, which is we're in the heart of nature. Uh, so please, we're always um, evolving our health and safety program. We are currently not sailing now. We haven't sailed since March of 2000. 20, uh, but hopefully we'll be resuming sailing on Arct October 31st, 2000 and 
2021, this upcoming October for our Antarctic season. So that's one reason to really reach out to Diane about an Arctic 2022 trip because they will be filling out with us not having an Arctic season uh, this year. So please reach out to Diane with any questions that you have. We have a great uh, cancellation and rebooking policy too. So when you book with Diane by June 20th, 30th, you'll be covered by our enhanced um, book with confidence policy. So if we do cancel, one of the options is getting a refund. Uh, but you can for any reason 30 days prior to your voyage, even on the day of embarkation, no questions asked, rebook your trip. So reach out to uh, Diane about more about our COVID safe policy. So thank you so much for having me today, Diane, and, and thank you all of you for your time to let me share a little bit, literally the tip of the iceberg of the Canadian Arctic. Uh, your adventure awaits in the Arctic, that is for sure. Oh, that is for sure, Kara. Thank you so much. So many wonderful memories flood back as you're talking through, you know, those as you know, everybody's got rosy cheeks and you're in your, you know, still have your snow pants on and your turtleneck as you're coming in from your Zodiac ride to the bar and ordering a Caesar or whatever. And as you're just starting to chat with the people around you, you know, out come the phones and look what we saw and, you know, so many great stories. And, and it's true when you're traveling with like-minded people, I mean, the questions aren't, oh, you know, where do you work? You, you know, all of that stuff doesn't matter. You're, you're traveling with people that are nature lovers like yourself. You have the same interests. And, and the conversation is much more deeper. And, and you really share these experiences together. And, uh, oh, so much fun. I can't wait. And I can't wait to see your new beautiful machine. Oh, my goodness. That vessel is going to be phenomenal. And, um, oh, Yes. So anybody, I mean, think about joining us. This nine day package couldn't be put together any better. That's why I blocked a group because your flights are in. Everything is neat and tidy. We don't have to mess around trying to make things match. It is just the perfect way to get to the Arctic and not have to take a month of vacation. So um, Wi-Fi is in as well. You know, so if you do need to do some work and check emails, all these things are possible and I'll, you know you certainly don't want to spend all your time there doing that but it's a it's an easy way to check in as well and um, also too diane i did want to mention because of you and your group yes. um people will not be able to get the type of promotional yes. uh, group discounts that you've been given as well so reach That's out right. to diane about pricing because if you look on our cork website it's not available because diane has a special group rate yes. so definitely inquire about that too which is which is wonderful yes absolutely and i'd love to have you come join me we can experience this together so thank you again and i appreciate this i look forward to seeing you next week and kara you know, you are always so gracious and I love how you share your personal experiences with us. And I just really appreciate always your support and uh, being here for us. Oh, so you Diane, thank you so much. And thank you for hosting these travel talks because I just love dreaming of travel and we're, we're getting there, we're moving forward. So uh, thanks for holding space for these wonderful uh, travel talks. Oh, thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, be well.